Yes, got it. I didn't get your point. No dissociation before vapor density. Below. Yes. See what happens, I'll tell you. How we get this formula, we have a derivation for this, but that derivation is not required. See what happens actually, when you have a molecule, suppose A molecule you have, right? So it has certain vapor density, right? D, okay. When the reaction starts, and it converts into different molecules, say B and C. Then in the mixture, we have A, B and C present at equilibrium, right? All three are present. This B and C won't let that vapor density to be as D only, this D only. But this mixture has a different density, vapor density that is small d, right? So based on this only, this formula is given that when there is a dissociation, so initial vapor density minus the density that we have observed one divided by N minus one into D, where N is the number of product here, because this also has a role over here. Based on that, we have that formula, right? So derivation is not there. Like if you want, we can discuss it, but not required. But this formula is useful. Directly, you don't have to you know, uh, get confused over here. Data will be given. If vapor density and density is not given, you cannot find out vapor density on your own. So it will be given in the question. So once the vapor density is given, you can think of this formula in order to find out the alpha degree of dissociation. Correct, no doubt. Yeah, tell me. Understood? So basically when molecule dissociates, its vapor density changes. And with respect to vapor density, what change we have in that, we can find out to what extent the dissociation is taking place or takes place, right? With that reference only, we have that formula. Tell me, clear? Yeah. Okay. Now we'll see some questions on this, you see here. Eleven, twelve, and thirteen, you try.
done all three questions are you done Yeah. So eleventh one, you see, the reaction is given: carbon solid plus CO two gas gives two CO gas. Partial pressure of CO two is given, that is two, and that of CO. Is four. We need to find out the Kp of the reaction. So, what is Kp? Partial pressure of the gaseous product by partial pressure of the gaseous reactant. So, four into four divided by two, eight. Okay. Now suppose if this, you know, if this uh, value, partial pressure is not given. Suppose in the question, the partial pressure is not given. Could you find out Kp in that case also? See, if partial pressure is not given, then it will be difficult to find out Kp over here. If total pressure is given, then we can find out. Suppose partial pressure is not there, total pressure is there, then we can find out. One more thing you must keep this in mind. Yeah, that you see the molar ratio of CO2 and CO is 1 is to 2. Correct. One is to two is given. So partial pressure of CO two or CO, if I write down, it will be the twice of the partial pressure of CO two. That is for sure because the molar ratio is one is to two, and we know pressure is directly proportional to number of moles. So with molar ratio, we can have the relation of partial pressure. Then if total pressure is given. We can find out the partial pressure of each component, and then Kp. That is also one way. Okay. Next question. What is the answer? Next one. Number twelve. Two fifty degrees Celsius. The vapor density of PCl five is hundred. Okay. So PCl five dissociates as PCl three gas and Cl two gas. PCl5 gas we have at 250 degrees Celsius the vapor density is given means vapor density of the mixture we have so it's small d is given that is a uh, hundred the capital D would be two times of the molar mass of PCl5 I'm sorry capital D would be half of the molar mass of PCl5 that's the formula we discuss in mole concept chapter if you remember. Molecular mass equals to two times vapor density. What is the molecular formula of PCl five? Is it two not eight point five? Is it? Could you tell me this value?
So this would be 104.25, right? Now we have the formula. We'll use that formula alpha because degree of this is alpha you need to find out. So it is 104.25 minus 100 divided by n value is 2, 2 minus 1 into 100. One more thing, if you get confused over here, which one is a small d, which one is capital D, one more thing you must keep this in mind. This alpha will never be negative. So accordingly, you can subtract. Alpha will never be negative. So accordingly, you can subtract. So answer would be 4.25 divided by 100. So alpha is 0 0.04 approximately. Option B is correct. 13th one, what is the answer? Thirteenth one, anyone? Okay, let's discuss the 13th one. Okay. Six gram of hydrogen reacts with this chlorine molecule. So reaction is what? H2 plus Cl2 gives two HCl. Six gram of hydrogen means we have three mole. This much atom of chlorine, 9.023 into 10 to the power 23 divided by approximately six, uh, I'll assume 10 to the 23. So roughly I'm assuming this as nine by six mole of chlorine. Can we say that? Given number of molecules divided by Avogadro number. So we have nine by six moles of chlorine, right? If total pressure of the reaction is this, then what will be the partial pressure of HCl, okay? Total pressure is given, that is 800 mm. We need to find out the partial pressure of HCl. So what is the pressure of HCl? It is mole fraction of HCl into total pressure, which is given 800 over here. So if you find out mole fraction, you can find out this, uh, you know, the total pressure over here, right? So you see here, three moles and nine by six mole we have. So which one will get consumed completely? Is it Cl2? Okay. If Cl2 will get consumed, so number of moles of HCl would be what? One gives two, so this gives three moles, right? Three moles of HCl we are getting. Total number of moles. What is the total number of moles? Nt is equal to the number of moles of H2 plus number of moles of HCl because there is no Cl2 present here. So 
So if you see, this is nothing but 1.5 moles we have. Okay. So one moles reacts with one. So 1.5 moles reacts with 1.5 moles of H2. So number of moles of H2 left here is 1.5 moles of H2. So total number of moles would be three plus 1.5, that is 4.5 moles of H2. We have total number of moles. This X is equals to the number of moles of HCl3 divided by 4.5 into 800, I think the total pressure is given, is it? Yeah, 800 is given. So it is 15 and this, I think we're getting uh, 1.5 and then 8,000 divided by 15. And that would be 500 something. It is 533 mm approximately I'm getting, isn't it? Looking at the options, by looking at the options. 533. Is it fine? Clear? Any doubt, guys? Okay. This one you try. Question number 24. Twenty fourth one, what is the answer? Twenty fourth is uh, oh, I'm getting all three different answers. Okay, B, D, and C. Is it? Acha, one second. I'll do this twenty fourth one. You see, in this twenty fourth one, we have um, C plus CO two gives CO. The equilibrium pressure is twelve atmospheric. Fifty percent of CO two reacts. Calculate the KP for the reaction, okay. 50% of CO2 reacts. Achha. So what we need to do here, suppose we have carbon solid plus CO2 gas 
gives a uh, two CO gas. If it is P initially, this would be zero. Half of this reacts. So the, the left, it is left. P by two is left, and two into P that forms. Right, because one gives two. So if it is uh, P minus point five P, then this would be P. Right. This is given P by two plus P. Is equals to twelve atm, right? So one point five p is equals to this p is equals to twelve by one point five. That is the pressure we have. Kp is equals to pressure of CO square by pressure of CO two. Pressure of CO is p that is twelve by one point five square. CO2 is P by 2, which is uh, 1 by 2 into 12 by 1.5. Sixteen atmospheric ambient. Just you need to solve this. Since the initial pressure is not given, no, I have assumed it as P because this is solid. You can ignore this. This is zero. You can also take this as one. That is also fine. Okay, one concentration. But I assume P, and that P we can find out with equilibrium concentration. Yeah, two forty by one point five we have over here. It is. Two forty by one point five. Once you solve, you will get this only. This entire thing will get cancelled. This two will get multiplied by this by one point five. So two forty by one point five. Is that clear? Okay. Next question number twenty five. Question number twenty-five. Is it A? It is alpha D glucose converts into beta D. Glucose. Okay, don't think about this term. Muta rotation. We'll discuss this in twelfth grade. Ah, uh, it is there in the biomolecules chapter. We'll discuss it over there. Just you understand here. We have some process which converts this alpha into beta. Okay, we also discuss all these things in detail. What is alpha D glucose? What is beta D glucose? Here you just assume this. Uh, these are the two compounds which are interconvertible. So at some condition, sixty-three point six percent of glucose. Is in beta form means this is sixty three point six, and rest is this, which is thirty six point four. I guess, right? We have this mixture. Means when you take glucose, right? When you take glucose in the solution, it will have two forms actually. One is alpha, one is beta. That is what you can understand now. Beta form is more stable; its composition is more, and rest is this alpha form. Composition is less. Simple, Kc is equals to what? Beta by alpha, sixty-three point six divided by uh, thirty-six point four. So thirty-six into two is seventy-two. So answer is less than two here. So obviously B and C is not possible. I think it is one point seven. Is it A?
A or D, what are you getting? Twenty sixth one, tell me. Yes, twenty sixth. Are you getting C? Okay, twenty-sixth one. You see here, for the reaction, the rate constant for forward reaction, reverse reaction is again very simple. Rate constant is given. Nothing you need to do. Equilibrium constant equals to what? Rate constant of forward by rate constant of backward. This we can do. Rate constant for forward reaction is one into ten to the power minus four given divided by two point five into ten to the power minus two. Right. So it is uh, minus two. Then it is minus one. Then we have uh, uh, four into ten to the power minus three will get over here. Option C is correct. Okay. this is the answer so you'll get this kind of questions here in this chapter okay let's discuss some more concepts here i guess you don't have any doubt in these kind of questions there is an equilibrium called simultaneous equilibrium an equilibrium called simultaneous equilibrium simultaneous equilibrium is the equilibrium like in which two different reactions have one common product okay so for example you see if you have a gives b and c and we have another reactant molecule d which also forms b in the same vessel are you getting it the condition suppose this two reaction is taking place in the same container what do you do you take a reaction vessel right a reaction vessel close obviously because for equilibrium we must have the closed vessel that's a condition and in this you place a and d simply keep it there then obviously what happens slowly this a starts converting into into b and c and d starts converting into b and e this is the reaction taking place here in this container now since the two reaction has one common product okay so in the vessel wherever we have like if b is present it will affect the equilibrium of both reactions because both involves b right so whether the b is coming from a or d it doesn't matter it will affect the equilibrium of both reactions can we say that yes agreed yeah okay are you tired guys today you are not responding yeah like explain you won't respond your doubt then yes can you can you hear me are you sleeping or what
Okay, I don't see any response from your side. Only few of you are responding, but others are quite completely quiet. I guess today I don't know what happened today. Are you tired today, all of you? No, not tired. You want to eat something? Pizza? Pizza will go with extra cheese. Yes. Acha, now it's not fine. Acha, whenever we start offline, I'll treat you with pizza. Outside food not is not allowed. That's good, Shraddha. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Whenever we meet. Okay. So this is due. But you have to be active in the class for this. Okay. Any exam you have in the school? Any scheduled exam in the coming, you know, uh, like weeks? Thursday you have physics, right? When is chemistry? This is what the uh, pre-board or what? Acha unit test. Unit test is fine. I can understand. <clears throat> Chem is in January. Achha, this is the unit test in January. Achha. Okay, fine. I got it. So look, we'll get back to this. Okay, so what I said, I said that two different reactions gives one common product. That is uh, B here, right? So what happens if suppose this A and D you have taken in a vessel like this? Okay, so A starts converting into B and C. And at the same time, D also starts converting into B and C. Correct? So since we have one common product here in this two reaction, so the presence of B affects the equilibrium of this and this both. It is, see, this D won't say like, okay, this B is not, I did not give this B. So this is, this won't affect this equilibrium state over here. In the reaction vessel, wherever the B, the product B is coming from, whether it is coming from A or coming from D, it will affect the equilibrium state of both reaction. Yes, this kind of reaction we call it as simultaneous equilibrium, where two different reactions gives the same product, right? At least one product is same. Is it clear? Understood? Right? So total concentration of B, if I ask you in this particular you know, vessel, then it would be what? It would be because of A and because of D, whatever we get. Suppose X we get from A, Y we get from D. So total concentration of B or total moles of B would be X plus Y, okay? So let's write down this. Suppose we have initial concentration of A, I am assuming is a small A here, and this one is small b. So initially there is no b, there is no c. When this starts converting into b and c, we'll write a minus x, we'll get x of b and x of c, moles. All these are dynamic equilibrium, there's no static, right? Reaction, whenever you're talking about all chemical reactions, you know, if it is equilibrium is taking place, then it is dynamic because reaction never stops at equilibrium state, okay? For B, I am assuming it is zero and zero again. And we can take, the, because A and D are two different molecules, so we can assume it is B minus Y, different uh, you know, degree of dissociation. It is Y and it is Y. But in the vessel, the total concentration of B is what? The total concentration of B would be X plus Y. Here also we can write down X plus Y and X plus Y, because both affects the equilibrium of two reactions. Clear, understood? Okay, so when two reaction gives one, at least one common product, the reaction is said to be in simultaneous equilibrium both affects the equilibrium of each other. Okay, this is what the definition we have. Now you see, for this I am saying it is Kp1. So I'm gas, I'm assuming this, okay. 
this is solid this is solid this is gas and this is gas okay or i'll write down the general expression and i'll tell you what happens here let it be okay let me write down the general expression only if gas will take then we'll take the pressure that's simple kc1 right and kc2 so what is kc1 here kc1 equals to the concentration of c into concentration of b by concentration of a and that would be x into x plus y divided by a minus x this is what we can write similarly kc2 would be y into x plus y divided by b minus x this is what the expression we need to write in case of simultaneous equilibrium b minus y yes obviously b minus y copied yeah now you see this question based on this we have two reaction a solid converts into b gas plus c gas it is kp1 value is given 1000 then we have the next another reactant molecule that is c solid gives b gas not c b gas plus we have e gas here kp2 is given that is 600 okay calculate the total pressure at equilibrium remember total pressure is always because of the gaseous product or reactant so find out what all gaseous product or reactant we have at equilibrium and what is their pressure add all those you will get the answer okay see how do we do this since a and d are solid so you have to ignore this right there's no point of considering solid here right so we have to ignore this okay now suppose if this a dissociates it gives some amount of b and that will exert p1 pressure p1 pressure because we have same stoichiometric coefficient so whatever the amount it forms corresponding to that value p1 is the pressure we have similarly for d it is p2 and p2 the pressure
total pressure of B would be P1 plus P2 because it's simultaneous equilibrium. Solid, the concentration and pressure will take its one unity. We don't consider that into the equilibrium uh, expression because these are these are incompressible. Hence, the concentration or pressure of solid or liquid you can assume as unity one. Okay. So the expression of Kp one would be P one into P one plus P two, isn't it? Is equals to thousand because there is no the solid present here. So denominator it is one, a solid it is one. So that's we are ignoring. Kp two would be P two into P one plus P two is equals to six hundred given. Right? What we need to find out? Could you tell me? What we need to find out? We need to find out Pt total pressure. Right? This pressure is because of all the gaseous species. That is the pressure of B, pressure of C, and pressure of E. These are the three species we have at equilibrium. So pressure of B is what? P one plus P two, and pressure of C and P E is again P one plus P two. We have so obviously we need to find our total pressure two times of P one and P two. This is what we need to find out. So if we have this equation, you can solve and you can find out P one plus P two, and then two times of P one plus P two is your answer. Could you tell me the answer now? Are you getting eighty? Okay. So how do we solve this? We'll just add the two. Okay. There are many different ways, but the best way is what? You add the two equation. This two. So left hand side, you see, you'll get P one plus P two common. So overall, you'll get P one plus P two whole square is equals to thousand six hundred. So with this directly, you got P one plus P two is equals to Forty. So, what is total pressure P T? Two times of P one plus P two, which is nothing but eighty. Clear? No doubt. Okay. Okay. So you see here, this is you know it for this. We are left with two more things in this chapter. The last point that we are going to discuss in this chapter, the last concept, is the most important one that is Leach Atelier's principle. Okay. Before that, we need to discuss Arrhenius equation, right? So Arrhenius equation will start after the break, and then we'll go into Leach Atelier's principle. Okay. The last. topic of this chapter so we'll resume the class after the break at 6:30 okay take a break now